It's not just me. There we go. How you doing, my friend? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Quick question. How much of this is going to be live and how much of this is going to be recorded? And will they be in these venues or in other places? And also really quickly, are you going to be able to get your haircut done before the June? <laughs> uh, I'll start with the haircut. Yes. Hopefully uh, restrictions allow me to get in. It is getting pretty long, I got to say. But um, yeah, the hope is that we will do as much as we possibly can live. This is one of the great things about the Junos is that we are a live, live show literally across the entire country as well. So what you're seeing in Toronto is what people are seeing in Vancouver or St. John's, Newfoundland. So the goal is as much as possible that we'll have live performances. We'll just have to sort of wait and see how each artist's performance comes into play, where they're located and how we're going to go about it. So a lot of those details are still getting worked out. But the majority of the show, yes, we hope to have live. Next up is Rudy Blair. So Rudy. Hey, Jess, great seeing you and congratulations. You. Um, how important is it now for you to have these consistent nominations and wins, especially because of what everything has happened in 2020 as with you know racism being in the forefront and as we also celebrate women this month, how important is it for you now seeing this kind of consistency for people to see somebody like yourself achieving your goals? Uh, I said, I think it's important. I think that um, I feel I feel honored when I look around at the nominations and feel like I'm looking at a rainbow. I feel like it's a it's a great reflection of the multiculturalism that Canada holds as a whole. And I think that any progress is good progress. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy that it's that it's apparent, but I also think that there's always a way to go. There's always a way to improve and having multiculturalism, not just in the nominations, but having that representation in boardrooms, that representation in executive rooms, I think is also so important. And again, any progress is good progress. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that it looks like a rainbow, but I always think that there's room for improvement. So I'm happy to see that that's the direction that the music industry is trying to go in and trying to have heading in Toronto, in Canada. Making sure I've got the microphone on, my friend. Look, congratulations on this. How does it feel being able to not just chart in Canada, but doing extremely well in the U.S. and being recognized for your music, but also being recognized, too, as being part of the Red and White and Maple Leaf? Honestly, it's amazing. When I first kind of, like, started blowing up on social media, like, early, early on, I was getting, like, more love from America than Canada, and I was always, like, salty and, like, Oh, my own, you know, my own country's not showing me love, but that, that caught up really quick. And now to see, you know, two years in a row to get nominated for, for Junos, uh, to be played on the radio, to just, you know, charts, like you said, all that stuff is amazing. But the most amazing part is, you know, when I got to taste that little, you know, show experience, even though my tour got canceled and I got to see my, you know, my Canadian fans, my first show ever in Toronto, in my hometown, um, you know, that was a day I'll never forget. And, and uh, I can't wait to, you know, tour Canada again and, and meet all my fans. Congratulations. Thank you. Savannah, congratulations on this. Um, how hard was it to get your music out there throughout 2020 with the pandemic, with so many things opening and shutting down? One minute you could do a concert, the next minute you can't. How yeah. hard was it to get that music out there to people and to be able to receive your nominations that you've gotten? And very quickly, second, what is that behind you? Is that boulders or what is that? No. It's balloons from my birthday, which was like a month ago, but <laughs> I just, so they just been in my living room for like six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> my original question, please. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was the question again? Yeah, about the getting that your music out there throughout 2020, yeah. knowing yeah. about with the COVID and yeah. everything else. Yeah, um, honestly, I think it's the hardest part about the pandemic and COVID is the, where, where it puts your mind. Do you know what I mean? Um, we had the music, we had things ready to go. You have a plan of how you want to roll things out. You want to go on tour. You want to go do all these things and they're not an option anymore. So um, I think the hardest part was just shifting um, the mind state of, of okay, now we, we got to make this work whichever way, you know? So getting the music out wasn't really the hard part. It was like, adapting to where we're at right now um yeah and then i mean i put out a project as well and the the only other option was okay you know are we gonna wait till the pandemic is over but no one knows when that's gonna be so 
yeah, like to get these two nominations is incredible. And, you know, my project came out after the, the submissions date, submission date. So this is really just for the singles from the project and they've been so well received during this time. So it, as much as it's been different, it's also been super, super rewarding. Congratulations and happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. Hi, How you doing, my friend? Good seeing you. Likewise, great to see you too, Rudy. Let me get to the question. Um, you have changed so much in the last, I'd say 13, 14 months, musically. Listen to your music. Yes, it's country, but it's a different type of country uh, where you're bringing other elements into your music. Uh, you and I had a personal chat where we talked about the things that we were seeing in 2020. Um, is just, you know, a whole different atmosphere. A lot has changed for you, but you're still receiving these accolades and still considered really as the number one uh, Canadian country artist. How do you feel about those changes in you? And also this success that you're getting now in the US too, a lot going on. And the Juno Awards has just added bonus to all this too. Uh, Rudy, I, I, I appreciate what, what you're saying and I've always appreciated our conversations. We've been able to be very frank and, and have a honest and open relationship, you and I. And for me, I think the best part about my genre of country music and being able to grow into the genre is to have something of value to say. And in a lot of other genres, which I love and actually listen to on a, on, on a regular basis, even maybe more so than country, some things are maybe a little bit more driven by melody and feeling as opposed to the story that country music can tell. So as I've gotten older, as I've had these experiences and as I've watched the world go through what it went through, the ups, but especially more so the downs of the last 12, 13, 14 months, it's very difficult for me to just focus on, I don't know, fluffy topics when real life is going on. So a new record talks about more real life topics than I've ever had the courage to talk about. One-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with you in the media, but also you as my friend is the perfect example of having the courage to stand up and say something that maybe just maybe a publicist may say, hey, you know, tread lightly on this topic, you know, maybe it's better to just, you know, uh, stay neutral. But being neutral is also picking a side. So I just want to stand up for the underdogs. I want to stand up for what I believe in. And I want to use my music and my platform to spread as much positivity in what has been a dark world to a degree over the last 12 months. So it's a whole new mindset that I've got right now. And I'm really grateful that I have worked to have a platform now where people can listen and maybe just maybe by spreading positivity, you can change people's perspectives. Congratulations, big hug to you and big hug to the family, man. I'll see you soon. Do you feel uh, Cardi changed your life in helping you get into the direction where you are at right at this moment? I think I think when it comes to, 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 to really big um, and important bodies of work that get put out, um, in our industry, um, it takes a village. And I think um, it takes people with vision and people being able to really see your vision. And I think Cardi encompassed uh, all of those things for me. He he saw us at, a, at the stage that we were in and uh, he saw and believed in our music and he, um, and he really stuck his neck out for us and, and really helped smooth the path for us to be able to be here today. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you very much. Hey, congratulations on the success that you're having right now. Can you talk about, you know, what 2020 to this point in 2021 means to you, considering in fact that the MTV European Awards that you were nominated in on that. And then here we go, we go into 2021, you get these two really important Juno nominations with other big artists, considering the fact so many people have been going through some tough times you've somehow been able to shine some light through those tough times to show people that we can find success through again, that same, those same words, tough times. Um, I think I'm just honestly so happy that I can still create music. Um, I mean, I, music is my always way to feel better about things or, you know, if I'm ever in a tough space where I'm down, you know, music is the one thing that I, helps me reach out to things and, and help me, you know, obviously feel better and, 
I'm just really, really grateful that I can be that person for a lot of people. And I can write about everything that's going on in my brain mentally and hopefully put it into words for other people. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's an honor to be able to walk into 2021 like this and, uh, you know, obviously create this achievement, but I, I think music is just, I'm really fortunate that I'm still able to create and keep it going no matter the circumstances of the world right now. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> My friend, congratulations on this. Um, I can't see your dad, but I interviewed your dad back in the day many, many times. Is there any way that he could come up on camera? Dad, you want to pop in camera? Uh, <laughs> He's not ready, but <laughs> there he is. Hey, guys. How you doing, man? I interviewed you back when I was with 680 News back in the day, a long time ago. And I interviewed the group, and it was always great talking to you, man. What do you think about the success of your son, even though he went to a different genre? Um, the success is there, and it's father and son, Juno nominees. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's unbelievable how proud I am of, uh, of him. I'm just amazed and blown away and feel incredibly blessed to uh, have a son that's as, uh, as good as uh, this guy is. You don't get any better than this guy right here. <laughs> He's a good, good kid. And, <laughs> Honest, hardworking, loves God and uh, loves his fans, loves his family, and he's thankful for everything. So, I'm really proud of him. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Good to see you guys. JJ, we're finally looking at each other because you and I did an interview a couple of months ago on this album. And look, nomination, congratulations on this. Um, definitely talk about that journey that you went through because. Man, you should be a movie with everything that you've gone through, uh, getting that music out there. The show Women Can Still Rock, and you're proving that right now in this category. Can you talk a little bit about what led you to this moment? Well, um, I have been pursuing music, I mean, in some sort of way since I was 16. But really, I mean, it started... I've been doing it, yeah, over 10 years, I guess, playing gigs and, and things like that. So, I mean, from the beginning, I, I just love to write songs. I learned how to play guitar when I was 16. And then it was a uphill battle of, um, you know, balancing, you know, three jobs at a time or sometimes two jobs, three jobs, and then always having music as my kind of guiding light. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been a road. I've been, you know, touring in, in different aspects and stuff, but this has been, it's, yeah, I'm very grateful. <laughs> and just very quickly to follow up, those three jobs, as we talked about, helped inspire your music too. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I was working as a bartender, I was working as a receptionist at a spa, and I was working as a server at a pub. And a lot of my music came from the stories that I had of, you know, going out with my work friends or being late for work the next day or things like that. It all kind of, I really was writing this album about the journey that I had taken to get, I guess, to this point. So it's all very personal. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's very exciting. <laughs> Toby, congratulations on your success. Um, what has been the best advice that you've been given to reach where you are right now? And what advice would you give somebody else, especially uh, with the way the times are today? Absolutely. Um, the best advice that I was ever given was uh, never forget where you came from and never forget what you came to do. Um, and I carry that with me every day, uh, just realizing that, you know, to be able to create art is a is a is a is a privilege and it's an important position to be in and um yeah if i could give any advice to any artists coming up just to be uh true to your form true to who you are as 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 an individual and i think that that will just permeate through your art and permeate through your work always lead art first congratulations my friend congratulations on this win uh, I should say this nomination because I was just thinking about last year you won, correct? Yes. Crazy. Okay, so talk talk about the experience in last year, especially because for a lot of us, a lot of us were on a plane headed to Saskatoon yeah. when the Juno shut down, and we had to literally fly right back. 
where were you, what was going on, and how does it differ for you this year, yeah. especially with three nominations? Craziness. I mean, last year, it's so weird. I was just saying this, but the beginning of when this all started, like quarantine and really hit was like, in my memory was when Juno's was happening because I was in New York at the time doing promo and I was literally on my way packed from the New York hotel going to the airport to go to the Juno's and the everything got canceled everything got canceled and my mom and my sister were actually driving from Nashville and they were like midway and they had to turn around and drive home um, so it was, it was very, very crazy. And then we had like a little, um, at home celebration and it was just a whole new, whole new normal, but it's, it's really crazy putting out music also through quarantine and through COVID and then having it be recognized in this way. It like reminds me that it's, you know, heard and didn't just get thrown away because it's, it feels, you know, it's hard to like, remember that people are listening because I'm just, so isolated from everything and not being able to like tour it and stuff like that it can get tricky so it's just such an honor in every possible way that I got nominated for these and obviously that last year happened I'm just I'm so excited and congratulations beating. the induction and it's going to be happening at the Juno Awards congratulations on being part of the Hall of Fame it's so weird <laughs> it's so really weird uh, and then you just start thinking about it. it's like how much time has gone by. But when I think back to being in the bars and just like drinking in self-defense, you know, you playing Leonard Skinner and Kiss music until two o'clock in the morning in these cover bands and just putting in the time. Um, yeah, it does seem possible now because I don't think I could do it again. If someone was just be setting me down on the road that I just walked for the last 40 years, I don't think I'd do it again. A lot of people would say, yeah, I would do it all over again. I wouldn't do it all over again. It was an, an enormous amount of joy and, and an enormous amount of work. But, uh, oh, I was so stupid. I just did such stupid things. I didn't look after myself. But, man, oh, man, I'm glad to come out the other side of this and, and such a...